Hey guys, time for chapter four. I bet this place is crawling with snakes, Hooter said, shining his flashlight on an old log alongside the path. I don't care much about snakes or spiders, Q grimaced. Just the thought of walking into a web gives me the creeps. He adjusted his glasses on his nose as he always did when he was feeling uneasy. Snakes and spiders are nothing to worry about. Tony turned around to tell them. He had tried scouting ahead, but only had the courage to go a few feet before the group. Tony's right, Matt said, sounding as fearless as he could. There's nothing to be afraid of. Suddenly, a loud screech of a hawk echoed through the darkness, and all the members of the Adventure Club found themselves huddling together in the shadows of the pine trees. Katie shot her water gun in the direction of the hawk, and everyone listened as the strange and unfamiliar noises of the night filled, of the night filled the woods. The moonlit, the moonlight filtered through the trees, creating a sea of shadows that seemed to shift and sway in the breeze. The leaves rustled above their heads as they felt a sudden draft on their necks. They could smell the cold dampness of the lake in the air. Tony was the first to speak. I didn't say there was nothing to be afraid of, he whispered. I just meant that spiders and snakes are nothing compared to the legend of the lake. Now that's really creepy. Matt gripped Katie's hand tighter. What legend of the lake? He asked uneasily. Tony, Tony made his way back to the path, moving very slowly and turning around every now and then as he spoke. The rest of the club trailed behind him. The last time I went to visit my grandfather in the nursing home, he told me about the legend of Lake Lavart. Wait a minute, Matt interrupted him. Was he talking about this lake? This is Levy Lake. He must have had his lakes mixed up. No, Tony continued. He was talking about this lake, all right. He said that years ago, it was called Lavart Lake, and that over time, people began calling it Levy Lake. He was born here a long time ago, and he knows all that kind of stuff. So what's the big deal? Hooter asked. They changed the name of the lake. What's so creepy about that? What's so creepy is that there was something strange going on in the lake. Like it was haunted or something, Tony whispered. Was there a ghost? Katie whispered back, her eyes growing big as she, as she banished her sword toward the shadows. Well, no. No one ever saw a ghost, but people would disappear, and it wasn't as if they just drowned because they never found their bodies, Tony continued. Did any of them ever come back? Matt asked with a shiver for the breeze had suddenly picked up. Some of them did, Tony told him, but they seemed to disappear for a while, and when they did come back, they were never quite the same. They all had fantastic stories to tell and would sit by the lake for hours, just staring, like they were crazy or something. And the really strange thing is that all these people, the ones that never came back and the ones that did, all of them had gone out on the lake in a rowboat. What's so strange about that? Q interrupted. It is a lake and lots of people go out on boats. Tony stopped on the path and shook his head. Grandpa said that none of the people had a boat. He knew because his friend Adam Hibbs disappeared. My grandpa had been with him. They'd been a little bit older than us, and he had been camping out along the lake. They were sleeping in their tent when Adam got up. He said that he was thirsty and was going to get his canteen that he had hung up on a tree. My grandpa heard his footsteps outside the tent and then heard what sounded like someone getting into a boat. He waited, and when Adam didn't return, he got up and went out to look for him. And guess where he was? Where? Hooter whispered. He was out on the lake in a rowboat. A rowboat my grandpa had never seen before. Grandpa said that he 
grandpa said that it was a three-quarter moon and in all the light he could see Adam's face as he rode to the middle of the lake. And he was smiling, smiling like he'd never smiled before. My grandpa tried calling to him, but either he didn't hear him or wouldn't listen because he never looked back to the shore. Tony stopped to take a breath. Suddenly, a raccoon screeched in the darkness, and everyone automatically drew closer. Then what happened? Matt asked, trying to keep the nervousness out of his voice. A cloud must have drifted across the moon because it suddenly got dark, and Grandpa ran to the tent to get a lantern. But when he got back to the lake, it was too late. Adam Hibbs was gone disappeared boat and all and no one to this day knows what happened to him there were five more cases of people disappearing over the next 50 years and grandpa investigated all of them he could never put to rest what had happened to his friend and so when these other people disappeared he was right there asking questions and looking for clues the only thing that my grandfather ever uncovered was that there was always this rowboat and the disappearances always happened under the same moon. Tony was speaking now in a hushed whisper. It was always a three-quarter moon. That's the end of chapter four.